Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Tool Guards rooftop cargo carrier. This was provided to me by the distributor but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you'd like to purchase one of these I'll put a link to this in the description. So I have a hard carrier and it's very nice. It's a very nice hard carrier but that doesn't mean that this has no use. There are some big disadvantages of the hard carrier and advantages to this. So the hard carrier is massive so it takes a lot of space to store. It can also be difficult to put on top of your car because it's huge. Mine is 17 cubic feet which is 2 cubic cubic feet bigger than this, so it's very large. It also sits up higher because it sits on top of the rack where this sits on your roof. So you have a higher center of balance. It's worse with aerodynamics. If you have a situation where you're moving someone somewhere like to college, with the hard carrier, you put it on your car, you load it up, you drive to your destination, you unload it, and then you have to drive back with the empty carrier. With this carrier, you load it up, you drive to your destination, you empty it, you fold it up, put it in the bag, and then you don't have to have it on your car anymore. If you travel and go to hotels, a hard carrier has to be left on your car all night. This one, you could take it off and take it right into your hotel room. And probably the biggest thing is the hard carrier is super expensive. It costs, I think, six or seven times more than this. And then if you have to have a rack to put that on, that can cost you, you know, four to 700 bucks probably. And if your other option besides doing this would be to upgrade your car, this is a way cheaper option and more practical. Okay, so we have a thank you card here. It has instructions. So it has instructions for installation on vehicles with side rails, with crossbars, or without a roof rack. So it has a cinch bag here. These are the straps. More straps. And it looks like these are the door hook straps. And these are the roof rail straps. Okay, so this comes with a mat that you can put on your car. It's an anti-slip mat. And this is similar to like a liner you would put in cabinets where you could put your dishes on here so they don't slip. It's like a big piece of that. And here's the carrier. So this is like a fabric that's coated in plastic. So it's waterproof and it's very durable. This is similar to some of the kayaking gear I have. It's uh, you know very durable like some of the pack sacks I have are a similar type material. And then we have buckles here. They're reinforced. They're riveted. It has a um, plastic buckles here and it has this D-ring. It has that on all four corners. I'm trying to show what I can in detail on the bench then we'll move it to the floor. So here's the zipper. So this opening goes in the back. Has Velcro here and then we have these zippers and they're sealed zippers so water can't get through these. And there's two zippers. So I'm running out of space on my workbench here. I'll move to the floor where we can get a better look at it. I'll get some measurements of this. So this direction is about 50 inches. It's a little over 30 this direction, but this is slanted at one end. So this top portion is around 38. So from about here to here. And I'm not doing super accurate measurements. I can't imagine people need something that precise, but I wanted to give you a general idea of what I'm looking at here. So as I showed earlier, the zipper's under here. It has Velcro to hold the flap down. Okay, so I had two Velcro here on the back and two more on the side. Okay, there we have it open. So these are the instructions on loading. It says first place the mat on your clean car roof where you want to install your bag. Place straps on the car roof over the roof protection under the side rails with the male buckles facing up. Clean the bottom of the bag and vehicle rooftop before placing the bag on the roof. Failure to do so could scratch the paint. Unzip the cargo bag and center it on top of the vehicle between the supports of the luggage rack. Make sure to put the non-zippered side on the front part of the vehicle. As you load the bag, distribute weight evenly inside the bag, placing heavier items on the bottom. For best results, fill spaces with soft items like pillows, jackets, and blankets. When fully loaded, close the zipper entirely and secure the protective rain flaps with the Velcro tabs. So I was going to mention this before I even read the instructions is with these soft cargo carriers, I like to have them full. So that's a good idea to put coats and things like that in it. If I don't have enough cargo to fill this completely, like if I'm camping, I'll actually take our self-inflating mattresses and put those in there and I won't have them rolled up because they take up quite a bit more room when they're open. So I'm going to grab some gear and I'll put it in here. Okay, that's the self-inflating pad that's folded in half. This is a second pad, and this one's slightly narrower. And I'm just filling this up. If I needed more room, I would deflate these and roll them up because they take up just a fraction of the room. This is a winter rated mummy bag. Here's another sleeping bag. Now there's a weight rating on this. It says it's 40 kilograms or 88 pounds. So I won't be coming close to that. Okay, I've got a couple other items I'm going to shove in here. So I have a little bit more room in the slanted area right here. So I'm going to shove something in there.
Okay, so that's closed up, ready to go, except you're not really supposed to fill it up on the floor, then put it on your vehicle. You should mount it on your vehicle, then fill it up. But I wanted to do this inside because it's easier to demonstrate here. Now I could put more stuff in here. I didn't feel like packing a bag just for this video, but I thought it was a good way to demonstrate would be to put the sleeping bags and pads in there. So if you need more room, roll things up. If you don't need room, lay everything flat and it will take up more bulk. So these are all soft items. You need to use your discretion when you place hard items in here. We have a camp stove that you could probably put in between some layers of sleeping bag in a bag so it doesn't scratch them or cut them open and that would be pretty protected. I would never put my Dutch oven in here. It's super heavy and has hard points on the bottom. You wouldn't want those poking into your stuff or your roof or anything. One thing we do use these for is our folding chairs because they take up a lot of bulk. So we can line, you know, a couple of them up in a carrier like this. We usually take three or four with us so we can line those up. We have a folding table we could stick in here. And certainly this would be great for bags of clothes and bedding and things like that. And those things take up a lot of room. So that's one place it's nice using a carrier like this. Okay, so now we'll switch to outside. Okay, so I'm outside. I have this 2016 Subaru Outback and it's really windy out. So I'm recording the audio in my garage out of the wind. And I lined up my car so I could have a good shot of the top with my driveway camera. So this Outback has side rails that you can turn into cross rails, but I'll just leave them as side rails to do the installation. So I've already cleaned the top of my car and I've wiped down the bottom of the carrier. So that'll keep scratches from occurring. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the protective mat on. Next I'll lay the straps on as it's shown in the installation. They show the perpendicular straps on the bottom and then the ones that are parallel to the car go on top of those. And this is my first time loading this one on. I haven't tried it yet. Although I've loaded many things on cars before. And typically once you do it once or twice, you can figure out like how far apart to space the straps. So I may have to adjust it a little bit after I get it up there. Here's an up close look at the strap. So you want this lying down like this when you put it on the car. Actually, I'll show this side. So this has Velcro on it. This is a nice feature. It goes around the strap so it's not flapping in the wind. So when you get this on there, you want to be able to pull on this. So this needs to be on the outside. This short piece needs to be on the outside of the car so you can pull on it. And then once you get it secured, you can use the Velcro. And if this was too long, I haven't measured this yet, but you could always double up, you know, fold that and then use the Velcro to secure it. I thought of one more advantage of this over the hard version is that you could set this up and pull it into a garage and just not have anything in it. And then the next morning you pull it out and you just fill it up and go. With the hard carrier, I can't put it on the night before because my car won't fit in the garage. So if we're going on a trip, I have to connect it up to the car, carry it out there, and then load it up. It's quite a bit more work. Okay, so now I have the carrier empty and I have it unzipped. It said to unzip it in the instructions and I'll lay it out on the car. And then I'll fill it up and then I'll strap it down. So you want the zipper portion to open towards the back. So you want the slanted part in the front. So I've clipped the front part, but I've left the back unclipped so I have access to put stuff in it. So I put everything in the back of my car that I want to load in here, so I'll load it up and then I'll have the back of my car open to put other equipment. Okay, so I have it packed. I connected up all the straps, so now I can cinch them all down. Like I said earlier, the more you do this, the better you get at it. And I probably could have put the anti-slip mat a few inches forward. Had a little left over, I kind of shoved it under the bag. If it wasn't so windy and cold out, I probably would have folded it over and tucked it in a little more neatly. So now I'll cinch up all the straps and I'll use those little Velcro tabs to keep them from flopping around. There's no real science to this. I'm just going to try and get them somewhat even. Okay, here we go. I'll do a walk around of it. You can notice how I bunched up the straps when I use that Velcro to hold them down so they're not flopping in the wind. So I probably could have put more stuff in the angled section in the front to give it more of an arrow shape. So next time I load it, I will do that. I'll make sure that has that more arrow shape and I'll stuff things in there. Of course, I'm doing this mostly for demonstration. In actual usage, I'll probably put clothes up there and bags of clothes, and then I'll roll up the sleeping bags and everything and you know, put more stuff up there. So this is on a car with side rails. If you want to do it with cross rails, you do pretty much the same thing, but the straps that go parallel with the car will go under those cross rails. So this also works on cars without racks. 
So I'll demonstrate this. I'm not going to do a full install, but I'll demonstrate with one of the straps on how you do that. So this end is going to fit under the weather stripping of the car. And then the free end here will go under the D-ring. And then if you have the buckle here, you want to press down on it like this and then feed this up through like so, and then let go. And you can pull on it this way, but you can't pull it on this way. It jams to release it and then press that. So I had to set the camera down to put the strap in. You have to use two hands for that, but you can kind of see how that went under the weather stripping. The weather stripping goes over it and then it straps it down. So that should work on pretty much any car, I think. I have a Honda Civic and I've used that on the Honda Civic that way. So if you get one of these carriers, I would highly recommend you practice putting it on and taking it off a couple times so you get used to it. Like I say, you learn where it goes on the car, you know, how tight the straps need to be and things like that. So the final thing to do after you get it all ready is go around and check all the straps, make sure they're all tight, give it a shake, see if anything's loose. And then if you stop for gas on your trip, I don't care if you're doing this carrier or if you do have kayaks, bicycles, anything like that, I always recommend you go around and check it because things can loosen up. So go around, give things a shake, tighten anything down. That way you don't have things flying off at highway speed. And if it's your first time using this, you could even drive a little ways and just pull off into a rest area or you know, at an exit and then get out and double check it so you feel more comfortable with it. And then you'll get to know how it works and then you can just continue to check it at brakes. So that's the Tool Guards roof cargo bag. I think this is a great way to add more space to your car that doesn't cost a lot of money and isn't difficult to deal with. I can tell you right now, this is the carrier we'll take with us to pick up our kid at college. We can store it in the car on the drive up and then we can load it up while we're there. And if there's a chance we don't need it, we didn't waste time putting the large carrier on the car. This is much easier. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.